So as a color code question, that's the, that's the list of the ones that I'm aware of that they ask, and they, they ask those specifically to kind of confuse you, so those just kind of, uh, just to be aware of. I'd probably put those maybe in the back page of your code book, and that way if you have questions, you might be able to refer back to them and get, get an answer pretty quick. All right, the uh, next one on here, the answer to this one then would be uh, a ridge. Now it says, uh, I think external uh, rib, or what is it? Uh, it says ridge. Does it say ridge? Yeah. So the question there being that the ground and conductor mark is really the, the, the key word there, not, not the uh, flat cable conductor. Uh, this next one where the neutral conductor is blank compared to the ungrounded conductor when contained a multi-conductor assembly, the ground conductor should be marked as such. So it's either smaller than, larger than, equal to, or less than. <coughs> smaller than and less than is the same thing, right? Yeah, equal uh, So. I couldn't find it anywhere, but I just. Yeah, this, this one, this one sense, you'll okay. spend hours trying to find this one. Um, yeah. <laughs> 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 Sorry. I didn't think about that. Uh, three hundred uh, three ten dot one oh one twenty. Three ten dot one twenty. Uh is one of them. And let's see, is that yeah there it is. It's under note five. So it's three ten dot one twenty eight five. And these are those questions that I tell you, I don't really know why you'd even have to know this, because it's a manufacturer's rule. It's not like you're going to be making this stuff yourself and marking the, uh, you know, the ground conductor yourself if it's less than or smaller than or not. Smaller than being the, the answer. So it's on page 180. Uh, Left-hand column, dead smack in the middle, number 5, under 310.120A5. Uh, just while you're there, number four, the informational note, number five, and B1, all four of those have been test questions before. So on page 180, left-hand column, um, starting under uh, A, it's four, five, the informational note between them is a separate test question, and then B1 being a test question. Kind of a, just a litany list there while you're highlighting. 310, mm -hmm. A. Yeah, under five. And, you know, there's just not much in that test question to give you much uh, uh, starting on anything. It's kind of hard to, to narrow that one down. And, and it's in, in the boot, it's kind of just stuck out there way in the back. A 310 just is a, almost like an afterthought because it's a construction specification for manufacturers that want to make uh, cable or conductors that are, are listed for uh, uh, electrical purposes. All right, the uh, next one on the bottom. I, I really want you guys to pay attention to this one and look at it real carefully. This is this is a perfect example of a question. Equal to that no, no, smaller? Smaller. Smaller, smaller than. Really? Yeah, if you have a if you have an assembly that has a, a grounded conductor that's smaller than the ungrounded conductor, it's supposed to be marked so that you know that it's got a, a undersized or deraged neutral. Makes sense if you look at it that way, but if you we're trying to look at it as test question. It's just not much there to really get any traction on to get started with it. But anyway, that's uh, that's one of those that they put in there just as a time burner. You get that and you can't find it. Guys, you cannot get married to any one question. Mm -hmm. You can take it out for a date and for a spin, but if she starts you know, trying to hang around for a little while, it's time for you to move on, right? So that's, you got, I tell you, it's an easy thing to do, too, because you get, you get stuck on a question, you just be damned if you're going to move off of it. But you'll be damned if you, if you stay because it's just not a good idea. To, it's worth the same amount of points the next one would be. So, uh, the second to the bottom one on this uh, page uh, 24, pay real careful attention to the way they, they word this. It's a perfect example of a question that, that looks like something that is the exact opposite of what it's really asking you. Well, uh, what I did is I, I put an answer for the question, mm -hmm. just a guess, and then I marked it on my, on my book or scratch paper. So I know to go back and check it later. Oh, like just, to, just, to have, just to have yeah. a, something, something written down. For That's a good time. idea. Uh, and I'm going to get to that, something in that in a minute. So bring that back up again in a minute when I go through this whole kind of strategy how to do this test because there's some stuff that's Ooh, better than that. Yeah. But uh, at any rate, the, uh, the way this question is worded and the way the article in your code book is worded, it all leads you to thinking that, that what they're asking you for is a conductor that's considered outside a building envelope, right? And this is important to us when we're running feeders because we can't run somebody's feeders through somebody else's space. Somebody else's building. So the definition of a building, first and foremost, and then of course what's considered to be outside that building's envelope is important to us for those reasons. So it's a service-related question, and you're going to find the answer in 230.4, I think it is. 230.6. 6, that's 6. 4 being the uh, minimum number of services and the exceptions for that. Uh, 
30.6. You know, the, the way this article is written is that everything listed in this article down at the bottom is things that are considered outside the building's envelope. And the way this question is worded is the same way. It's, the, you know, when considering things that are outside the building, so it's almost like everything is leading you uh, kind of down that same uh, mindset. And then, of course, the first answer that you see to pick from matches up almost verbatim with what you're looking at in your code book under 230.6a. Uh, is it A? No, number one. 230.6, number one. Installed under less than, not less than two inches of concrete, right? No, beneath the building, I'm sorry. That's, where's the concrete? Is that the, yeah, beneath the concrete, beneath the building or other structure. And so the answer number uh, one there is, is two inches of concrete is minimum, right? Uh -huh. But the next one, covering four inches of brick, it's also a list of, it, that's also considered outside the building, isn't it? Because if, if two inches of brick is okay, then four inches is even better, right? But it's not specifically written that way. It's written as two inches of brick or mortar uh, under 84. Yes, yeah, so on page 84, the very bottom left-hand corner. The next one there is building, structure, raceway, encased in concrete, and brick not less than two inches thick. Four inches then is is also outside of building. So now you now you've got two questions that, that look like they're supposed to be answered. And of course, the third one would be in two inches of brick or mortar under a fork-covered sidewalk. Well, that's going to kind of sort of fall under see a building or other structure that's got at least two inches of concrete so the third one is also outside the building so you kind of have to force yourself that when you see it if you're really doing the test the right manner in other words don't look at the first answer that you come to that matches up with what you think the answer is you have to look at every answer to every question and make sure that you've eliminated the other three because in this case that would have kind of told you all right if, if, if I got two of them that are you know outside the building then I need to go back and look at that question again and it, just the way it's worded is that basically they're, they're describing it but telling you which one is not that the thing that we just described, right? They even use the word shell in all bold to make you kind of uh, lead in that mindset. So what's considered outside of a building envelope where it's run beneath the building and shall be considered as not what we're describing when it's which of the following. And of course, that's kind of the, the catch there is you just really, if you pay attention to the way that's worded, it's, it's basically opposite of what, 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 uh, what you think it is. And it's also opposite of the way that the code's actually written specifically is a list of things that are outside. So does it actually say that anywhere that it is that would be considered not outside the building? No, it's all considered. Say that again. All right, does it actually say anywhere like the actual twelve inches underneath the um, building? Because where do you see? No, it? Well, if you look under Note Four, Note Four is uh, eighteen inches under a building, so you can't quite met it. Oh, okay. Four. You see what I'm saying? Okay. okay. In other, words, in other words, they give you an answer right up at the top that, that matches up with what you think it is. So they're leading you by the nose hairs right straight down into the wrong answer. But if you're carefully looking at all the answers, then two would have popped up at you as also a potential answer if you'd missed the whole little knot there in the test question. So two again. The, the answer is number four. Because 12 inches doesn't quite make that 18 inch minimum that would be outside the building, right? Make sense? So it, it's... Yeah, yeah. It's, but you, I mean, if you look at that, the wording of that test question is really, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty sneaky. And it's easy to look at a question like that and answer it real fast because the first one you see kind of matches up with what you're looking at in your code book. And if you're in a hurry, then that looks fine to you. In fact, you probably feel pretty good about that answer and you keep rolling, but it, you're an answering just exactly opposite of what they're really asking. You. So you've got to read these. You, you, there's not a question on your test, guys, that you can look at casually. You've got to read every bit of that question. A lot of it, unfortunately, then in that case, you're going to get caught with stuff in the question that doesn't is not relevant. That's the flip side of it. But I'd rather you be wor worried about stuff that's not relevant and then being able to eliminate that because it's a lot easier than just completely missing, blindsided parts of the questions that are important but change your answer completely because there's a lot more of those that wait against you than the other 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 kind. So I think it's easier to identify stuff that doesn't matter because once you get there, then it's easy to kind of call those out. But in this case, you just got to be careful with the wording of it. Uh, there's another question I was really kind of proud of them for, and it's not on here. I just want to give it to you real quick. The maximum operated or permitted operating temperature for PVC? Oh. Anybody know where that is? Uh, it's three, 352.10, uh, no, 12, uh, D, I think. Look at that real quick. It's 352.12D. Uh, it's a question that asks you what's the maximum permitted temperature install PVC and they give you an answer block that is uh, 122 degrees. They give you uh, 80, 50, and 40. Right? 
Anybody on the, what's the page number? 216. 216. Page 216. It's 352.12D. Uh, Maybe 122 degrees, 80, 50, 40. They give you, so what would your answer be? Oh, 50 degrees C. Yeah. yeah. C. Yeah, that, that's messed up. <laughs> that's messed up really big time. Because I tell you, that 122, I don't have no, I don't have a clue what, what 122 degrees Celsius is. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, pretty damn hot. I, I damn know hot. exactly what 122 degrees Fahrenheit is because I mean, I've been in attics way too many times that even, I don't even want to remember them. So I know exactly what that is in Fahrenheit. I'm not any, I just don't relate to Celsius, though. So they sometimes play on your tendencies to look at things in inches instead of meters or centimeters and uh, stuff like that. So be careful of questions that are designed to catch you slipping. Like uh, the 122 degrees Celsius is not the 122 degrees Fahrenheit that's listed there on, on the page. It's actually, is it 50? 50 degrees. Fahrenheit. To me, 50 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, Celsius sounds like a nice, cool, you know, morning sipping coffee on the porch and you know enjoying myself, but. I just don't really, I just don't relate to it. So be careful of, of, of that because they have a few questions like that as well. And then there used to be one that they asked on everybody's test about carpet squares. It's the last one that's kind of in the same group. Um, if you, you may remember about the maximum size carpet square for like a flat cable conductor that's taking the test. Do you remember anything about like the maximum size floor covering, 36 inches square? Is it inches square or square inches? It is a trick question. It, it's, it's, uh, they, they give you the question, it's like uh, with carpet squares, FCC cable, flat cable is designed to be installed underneath the carpet, all right? So it's like, like in Best Buy and places like that where you get the great big carpet squares that they lay down. If you have FCC cable, they're asking you what's the uh, maximum size carpet square. It's under uh, floor coverings in uh, 342. No, 324, uh, it's FCC cable. Three, uh, 324. 324. 324, and then it's, uh, and then it changed it for this year, so it's a little different. Now it's 39 point something, because that's the SI equivalent. 324, 41. Dot, dot 41 is, uh, right, floor covering. 39.37 uh, inches. So it, it used to be 36 right there is what it said, now it's 39.37 inches. So I don't know if this is going to still be there.